Today we're going to look at the historical and biographical overview of the writer Kate Chopin. Catherine O'Flaherty was born in St. Louis, Missouri on February 8, 1850. Her mother came from an impoverished French Creole family, and because of hard times and the need for financial support, she married Catherine's father at age 16. She gave him legitimacy in the French Creole aristocracy. Now, St. Louis in the 1850s harbored the spirit of a fur trading town, and the city was growing as waves of settlers passed through to the west. Now, her father, an Irish merchant, furnished settlers with boats and supplies and provided his family a substantial living. In 1855, when she was five years of age, Chopin entered the St. Louis Academy at the Sacred Heart and was taught by Catholic nuns. The nuns at the convent provided her with an elite education for French intellectual women. Now, this was unusual given that most girls in the area didn't go to school at all. That same year, on All Saints Day, her father was killed in a train accident. Thomas O'Flaherty joined city leaders in celebration of a new line of the Pacific Railroad, and just as the train crossed a bridge, the structure buckled, plunging into a river. Chopin's father and 29 others were killed. Therefore, Chopin was raised in a household run solely by women. She lived with her mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother, all of them widows, and they were smart and independent single women. Her great-grandmother, Madame Victoire Charleville lived with them and taught her music and French. Now, Victoire's mother had been the first woman in St. Louis to obtain legal separation from her husband, after which she raised her children and ran a shipping business on the Mississippi. In 1861, the Civil War broke out in the United States, and one story goes that during the war, sympathies were for the South. Chopin apparently tore down an American flag and almost went to jail for her act. In 1863, her grandmother died on Christmas Day, as did her half-brother George from typhoid fever. He died on Mardi Gras Day. Some say these unhappy incidents combined to create a strong skepticism of religion in Chopin. Now, in 1868, Chopin graduated from Sacred Heart Academy at the top of her class. She won medals and was elected to the elite Children of Mary Society and delivered the commencement address. Then, from 1869 to 1870, she attended debutante parties. She learned to smoke and wrote her first story, Emancipation, A Life Fable, which was a sto short story about freedom and restriction. In 1870, at the age of 20, she married Oscar Chopin, the son of a wealthy cotton-growing family in Louisiana. He adored her and admired her independence and intelligence, giving her unheard of freedom for women at the time. And they lived in New Orleans, where she had five boys and two girls. Now, Oscar was not an able businessman, and in 1879, his work with the Cotton Exchange was down because of the war. So they moved his old home in a small Louisiana parish to run a general store and a smaller plantation. But in 1882, Oscar died of swamp fever, leaving her with heavy debt, so she took over running the store and plantation for over a year. But in 1884, Chopin sold up and moved back to St. Louis to live with her mother. Now, her mother died in the next year, leaving Chopin alone with her children again. So, to support herself and her young family, Chopin began to write. In the 1880s, writing was one of the few ways women could make a living, averaging $15 to $30 a story and perhaps a few hundred dollars for a novel. There was great demand for short fiction, and one of the genres that was most popular was local color, which offered descriptions of various parts of the country. She wrote and sold numerous short stories about the people that she had known in Louisiana. Now, Kate Chopin sold her first novel in 1890 and followed this with stories, essays and sketches in literary magazines. Now, early in her career, she was already very successful. Her social world expanded and her home became a literary center. In 1899, she wrote The Awakening, one of her most famous works about a female protagonist, exploring what happens when a woman experiences her own sexual being and her own self. Unfortunately, the content and message caused an uproar and Chopin was denied admission into the St. Louis Fine Art Club. She was deeply hurt by the reaction to her work. 
Now, the critical reviews and adverse reactions to the awakening devastated Kate Chopin. For the remaining five years of her life, she retreated into private life and sank into obscurity. Now, she wrote four more sh short stories, but only one was published. On August 22, 1904, Chopin visited the World's Fair that had come to St. Louis. After returning home that night, she collapsed. Two days later, she died. The official cause of death was a cerebral hemorrhage. Now, many of Chopin's works focus on the themes related on women's search for selfhood, self-discovery, or identity. Many also focus on women's revolt against conformity, often against gender conformity, or perhaps against social norms that would limit women's possibilities in life. And then other short stories might write about women's understanding of feminine sexuality or of women's experience of motherhood, pregnancy, or childbirth. Lastly, Kate Chopin did not characterize herself as a feminist or as a suffragist. Nonetheless, she's a woman who took women seriously. She never doubted women's ability to be strong, and she embraced the ideas of spirit, character, and living life with the constraints that the world makes for you. Now, although Kate Chopin published her stories in the 1890s, her texts did not gain acceptance in the American literary canon until the late 20th century, corresponding with the rise of feminist criticism as a mode of the literary discourse. Thank you so much for stopping by to learn more about the American author Kate Chopin. If you'd like to learn more about The Awakening or something else that she's written, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you'd like to read. And as always, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed.